this video is a struggle for me. I started not to do it because people can be so cruel on social media. But then I thought about it. The reason why some people are so cruel on social media is because um, just like what I'm about to talk about, they're trying to escape their miserable lives too. There is no way that a happy, adjusted, uh, stable person can celebrate in somebody else's misery or somebody else's struggles or somebody else's suffering or somebody else's downfall. It just don't come natural to those of us who, for the most part, live a productive, happy life. It's just not a natural reaction to things. Um, so for that reason, although I started not to do this video, for that reason, I did do this video because who cares about those type people? I mean, we do care about you people that's like that, but I'm just saying I'm not going to let that uh, control what video I put up. I also started not to put it up because it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant and it, it is a hard thing to talk about. And the ladies who are like me, um, who also have um, autistic children, I didn't want them attacked or this video to be used against them. But hopefully I will present it in such a way where it, it, it shouldn't be or it can't. So this video was motivated by a video that I just a little piece of a I watched the whole video, but the one piece of a clip in it and it was Dee Dee Love. And in the video, she was asking concerning uh, another YouTuber that's here on YouTube. She was saying, you know, does she come on YouTube? And I'm, I'm not saying word for word how she said it. I'm just saying what I heard, what I interpreted. Is she coming on um, social media, YouTube, um, fronting, fronting um, because she's trying to ignore uh, a situation in her life? If if she's trying to, it, it was something to, something to that effect that she said. And my answer to that, when I heard that little piece of the clip, I said, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, this is an escape. It's, it's an escape from real life struggles is an escape from um, the reality of what you're dealing with. Now, having said that, and I'm about to talk about autistic, uh, uh, raised, being a mother of an autistic child. Having said that, a lot of people come on social media to hide from and, es and escape what's real. Whether they're struggling financially, whether they're uh, lonely, whether they are uh, suffering in a marriage, or suffering in relationship, whatever it is, we all use social media to escape some type of situation that we don't want to deal with or we need a, a break from. Now, if you're spending too much time here, um, you need to reevaluate that because you have to deal with life, whatever your issue is, you have to deal with it and learn to live with it or learn to or find a way to make things better sometimes you life is what it is for you uh, and that's the burden that you've been given and you can't change it then you have to learn how to live life and be happy and have joy along with that suffering or, or along with that challenge but then there are some things that you can change but to keep this video from going too long again i wanted to talk about the the struggles of autism because a lot of times as mothers or parents of autism, um, we we uh, don't want to come off as whining. Uh, we don't want anybody to feel sorry for them. I don't want nobody to feel sorry for me. Um, we don't want to, like I said, we don't want to complain too much and come off as whining or come off as weak. Um, some people try to use it to their advantage and try to get sympathy and money and all of that. But for the most part, most of us do not. And I certainly don't want to. Um, and I will have to say, in all fairness, before I show any or what or share any or what I'm going to share, I have to say uh, that I was at an advantage with my son um, in that I had a lot of support. Um, he is 25 to be 26 in October, and he lives with his dad. His dad is is very hands on uh, with all of our children, but with with him, and always have been. Um, I didn't raise him as a single parent. And uh, when he was on deployment, he's military. When he was on deployment, I had plenty of support from uh, my parents, my sisters, 
uh, my nephews, um, neighborhood friend, friends and neighborhood um, relatives in general. My rel uh, my relatives are very very supportive of Joshua, and even um, educators. His uh, the first teacher, the first classroom that he ever went to, the teacher there and I are still to this day very good friends. And so um, she was, and she was extremely supportive. Uh, gave me a lot of information um, as he was growing up. So that was a blessing. But in spite of talking about all those blessings and also supports, there were some very, very hard days and some very, very dark days. And so I'm just going to share and talk about it. Um, and, and again, this is not for us to feel sorry for anyone. I just thought about this doing this video when I've heard DD Love say that. And I want to scream through the, through my phone. Absolutely. She wants to escape. <laughs> yeah, she wants to escape. Um, and um, I also saw, I was looking at uh, Raw Honest. I think her name is Raw Honest. It used to be Raw, Raw Honest T. Now I think it's Raw Honest Privilege. And her son uh, came on video. Uh, he is the cutest little fella. And that's the thing. Autistic kids, I really, I have rarely ever seen um, an autistic kid that wasn't beautiful, that wasn't cute. And I'm not just saying that. They are cute kids, but she got the cutest little boy. Uh, and it made me kind of miss, as crazy as the sound, my son when he was younger. Because my son was difficult when he was younger. And um, just seeing her son took me back. Uh, it took me back 20 years with my Joshua. But anyway, so let me get on before this video gets long. So this, this right here, this is not my journal. I didn't keep a journal. I guess I probably should have. I don't regret that I didn't, but this is from, um, an article called, um, something similar. It, the article name is at the end of this video. I can't remember it just that quickly, but it's something about don't whitewash autism, but I'm going to show the, where it came from at the end of this, uh, video. So this is a journal from a mother uh, or, or clips or uh, passages from journals from different mothers. And this one says, you know, I love my little girl more than anything, but I hate autism so much. I hate that nothing comes natural. It has all it has. It all has to be taught. I hate the meltdowns and the lashing out. I hate the self injury behaviors even more. I hate that that even with meds, we still have nights where we're up all night. I hate that. I hate the isolation and not having a normal life. Just simple things we can't do. I hate that she can't speak or even understand me. And and, and she goes on to talk on the next uh, picture that I'm going to show. But I understand a lot of what she says. Now, it's different from my understanding, raising an autistic uh girl than it is a boy um behaviors are very similar but there are some things a little bit different just some things that I myself used to see when I went out to the schools where my sons were where my son was but having said that it's like I said the behaviors are similar um and and I I can identify with her saying I hate autism so much um I used to say all the time, just a trip to the grocery store was like preparing for a trip to the moon, a trip out of space. You got to think of everything that could go wrong. You know, uh, if if an alarm go off in the grocery store, when they come over, when somebody come over suddenly over the loudspeaker, loud sounds, um, highlights, the lights. When I say highlights, I mean bright lights is what I should say. Bright lights. Autistic kids don't like you know, bright lights and sudden loud sounds, even though they can be extremely loud themselves. Um, things that could set them off that you, you know, just preparing for the unknown. Um, hoping that that particular day is a good day. Just, just recently I went to the, um, well, not really recently. I think it was in February. I went to the beach and I was supposed to go to Tanger outlet. And like I said, my son is 25 and he rarely, at this point, you know, 
I would probably say my son is the easiest child I have at this point. He's the only one that's disabled. And he is the easiest one, the most easiest going one or the easiest one to deal with right now. My other kids are 23 or 19. But this particular day, Joshua wanted to be an asshole. <laughs> and, and I say that sometimes jokingly, cause, but well, I don't know, sometimes he can be an asshole. But this particular day, he, he, he just wanted to give me a hard time or give us a hard time. And he and I knew going to any Tanger outlet to to shop with him, it, it was just not going to be the day to do that. He just was not having it. So he was and it and he wasn't like a you know, he's older now. He's a grown man. So he have grown man ways. So he wasn't having a meltdown or anything like that, a tantrum or nothing. He don't do he don't do that anymore. Um, we haven't seen that in a long time and I mean many years. Um, so mothers with, with children with autism, you have, it, it don't last always. It don't last always. They, they mellow out it, it, at some point, but he was being very stubborn in that. It was very obvious that taking him to the store was not going to be a wise thing to do. It was going to be a struggle. So finally, and this was, um, on a Sunday. So, you know, the stores closed about seven, even in tourist areas. So finally he got in a good mood. And we had to make a mad dash to the store at that point because he's in a good mood now. Let's go. Um, and, and and sure enough, we got there and he enjoyed shopping and, and we got uh, a little of an hour worth of shopping time. But she went on to say, and she was talking about this mother was talking about the things that she hated. Um, I hate that she can't speak or even understand me. Now, my son is nonverbal. He do not speak a word, but he understands us very well. But that only came within um, probably about the time he hit 12 or 13. That's when we realized that he understood us. And she went on to say, I. um," She talks about the fact that her child, and I I think I skipped over some clips, but she talked about the fact that her child would only eat Pediasure. So there's also some, um, some appetite issues that's going on. My son would only eat certain things because he had uh, so many um, sensory issues, which come to find out I have some serious sensory issues myself. But um, so he would only eat certain things. And for a long time, he wouldn't eat uh, things like grits or he wouldn't eat eggs. So, you know, he eat the same things over and over and over. Now he eats just about everything. Y'all going to see at the end of this video, I'm going to show a picture of him. He's a big old guy. Uh, you know, it ain't much he don't eat now, but it took years of, it, it took years of a lot of hard work to get my son to where he is now. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I can identify with, uh, with some young ladies. Uh, when I say young ladies, I mean younger than myself who is still raising children and they're in, you know, they're less than 10 or they haven't reached uh, puberty yet, or they, they're not a teenager. I remember those days um, and I remember how difficult it was. And I w- would like for them to hear this video and know that it gets better. It, for me, it got better. Um, and she went on to say, I, what I really want for her more than anything is happiness. To be able to take her places without all the screaming, even if she is in a damn stroller (laughs) happy flapping away I don't care as long as she is happy let them stare all they want I will always hate autism but I swear if she uh could just be happy or happy a good bit of the time maybe all the other shit won't make me so damn sad sorry for the vent now she felt this way oh on this day in August 2015, but I guarantee you she didn't feel this way every day. How do I know? Because there had, there were days when I felt this way and felt this strongly about it when I was, you know, like I said, when my son was younger, but it wasn't every day. It wasn't even every week. Um, I recall a time when uh, my uh, younger kids, because my son is the oldest, my girls, they were going to Disney World with my parents. And I decided not to take, to send Joshua or to go myself with him because I just felt like, you know, the characters running around and everything was just going to cause him to have a miserable, miserable day, a miserable day. And I didn't want that for everybody. 
So I felt like my parents would enjoy it better and my younger kids, my daughters would enjoy it better without having to deal with that. Now, I have taken him to Disney World. He's been to Disney World a few times. Um, and one of the two, one of the three times he enjoyed it. Uh, two other times he kind of tolerated it. There's a few rides he enjoyed, but it wasn't no use in, in keep, uh, taking him somewhere where he, it just wasn't for him. He enjoyed the beach. He loved the beach. He loved helicopter rides. So we, we kind of stick to the things that he enjoyed. It just makes life easier. Even now that he's an adult, it just makes life easier. Um, so this is from another mother. She said, our day has been spit, spent shredding books we love. Tomorrow will probably be spent asking for these books. Now that may sound crazy as I'll get out, right? But I understand that. My Joshua to this day, and it aggravates the heck out of me and, and the, the most Joshua's uh, arguments that me and Joshua have, and yes, I do argue with my son, is over his need to shred stuff or over his need to tear up stuff. And he's a clean freak. He wants everything clean and he wants to clean up everything. His mama, on the other hand, can be a little messy. <laughs> so messy in more ways than one, I reckon. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we argue over that. Um, me mostly arguing and him mostly ignoring me, but I can understand this, uh, tearing stuff up and then want that same thing the next day. It's crazy as that sound. Um, the OCD is seriously killing me today. He wanted, uh, up on the dresser, down off the dresser, up on the dresser. Then me sitting on the edge of the bed with my feet crossed who can live this way forever. I can recall, uh, my son at by the age of three. He could climb any fence, and I mean any fence. I don't care how high it was. Um, autistic uh, children, they're very strong. And if they feel pain, and I'm sure they do, they have an extremely high tolerance of it. So like I said, I had to watch my son. We had to watch my son at all times. There was, it seems to be no window that he could not escape out of. There seems to be no door. I don't care if there was a chain to it because again, he was strong. He could drag a chair over there and take the chain or whatever lock was on it. And they're smart and they're very smart and they don't talk. So you don't know what they're about to do. And, uh, he could escape. It seemed like he could escape from any, any and everywhere. Childproof locks, childproof windows, bump all that. He was like Houdini. Did I say that right? Yeah, Houdini. You know, he, he he can escape from all that. And I remember saying some days, who can live like this forever? Because it seems like it's going to be forever, but it's not. Now the Joker ain't going to escape from anywhere because he's too lazy. Um, but he he does like to leave in the morning and take walks. And we we just finding that out that he, he was doing that because he would turn off the alarm in the house. Like I said, he lives with his dad. So we just recently found out he was somehow turning off the alarm, leaving the house, taking his walk and coming back. Usually before somebody, before it, it, um, his dad and now my other daughters that's in college, they closed down the dorm. So she's there too. Uh, he would, he would get back before they wake up and realize he, he was gone. And it just so happened that they could catch him one day. So it, it's, it's, it's every, it's all the time something, even as an adult, you, you discover new things and you realize new things that they are doing or they can do. Um, this mother says, even when he's not angry, he's hitting me. Now that's something that didn't happen. Uh, I don't mean to make this any type, you know, to do with race, but autistic kids. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they hit some black mothers, but my son wasn't hitting me or his daddy. I'll tell you that. Uh, even when he's not angry, he's hitting me, uh, when he's excited or maybe he wants a reaction. I get tired of trying to redirect something more appropriate and I'm just taking it now. I just go to my happy place and just uh, take it. What I hate the most is not enjoying a single minute with my son. Um, Not enjoying a single minute with my son. I pray that she don't really mean that. I enjoyed a good bit of Joshua's life. There was some I did not enjoy. I will admit. It was hard. It was difficult. But I enjoyed the majority of it and still enjoy the majority of it, even when he's been an asshole. But so that's a sad thing to read. But 
Notice she said, I just go to my happy place and just take it. Why would a mother of, of autism or a mother of a disabled child be on any social media all day? They should be watching their son. And I don't mean that as an argument to anyone, but I, I use this video as a, as a response to it. Or they should be watching their child, I should say. I, I say son because my son is, my disabled child is autistic. But they should be watching their child when you're with your child 24 hours a day. Whether you're cooking in the kitchen, whether you're cleaning up the house, whether which is going to get destroyed. If you have, I don't care whether your children are, are disabled or not disabled, it's going to get destroyed. But that's no excuse for not keeping a clean house because you especially want to keep a clean house when you have children because everything goes in the mouth. So, but it's it's difficult. Uh, and don't add that the fact that you work to it. I didn't work during the time, so it made it a little bit easier, but I'm just saying, but you're with them, whether you're online <laughs> or you're staring at the TV, whether you're in the kitchen cooking or you're outside playing with them, you're with them. So sometimes you just want to go to your happy place. So perhaps as strange as it sounds, cause sometimes YouTube, especially this area of YouTube, this community of YouTube is not very happy, but maybe that's her place of escape so that she can take it, so that she can handle it. I don't judge how somebody else get through uh, uh, something hard. I don't judge it. I may try to help them uh, find a way to get through it um, that worked for me since my son is older, but... You do what you do to survive. I'll just put it that way. Children with autism aren't given to strong people. They're given to ordinary, everyday people. There was nothing stronger or stranger or, or, or anything special about me that I ended up having an autistic child. Just two ordinary people having their first child. Raising a child with autism doesn't take a special family. It makes a family special. It makes you different because again, all of this stuff we hide. You see, uh, when autism month comes out, you see all of this thing about, oh, how great it is to have an autistic child. No, it ain't. But you love them anyway. And you think they're great anyway. Um, you see all of these pretty words to make it pretty when it's not pretty. And, you know, I don't even know how to put it. I'm trying to think of how to put it into words. And even now as I'm trying to put it into words, I'm trying to make it pretty. <laughs> I'm trying to cover up for all the ugliness of it and all the, and how difficult it is. Because in spite of it being difficult, there's still something very beautiful and, and rewarding about it. Um, I don't know whether I would give up my Joshua or change them at this point in life. I really don't. He is who he is. And, um, and he's the child that I know. If that makes any sense. July, 2015, this is from uh, another parent. And I, I didn't, and, and I'm like I said, I'm going to give the link where you can read all of these. Some of these were just too difficult to share, too difficult to share and too unbelievable to share. This is how I feel. I'm not allowed to look sad or express my negative feelings, especially since it comes with dealing with ease. And, and these parents didn't give their children's names. They actually just gave initials with ease autism. Society does not tolerate, doesn't tolerate the, brut the brutality or the brutally honest truth. So I have to hide it deep inside, except here. I fear it will be the end of me eventually. Society doesn't tolerate the brutally honest truth. So I have to hide it deep inside except here. And thank goodness that these parents that speaking on this, this blog or this diary type thing had a place to go speak it. Some of them just spoke it in their journal. Some of them uh, was in support groups and I hate support groups. They never worked for me. I never went to them because to me it was like, okay, we complained about everything that we struggle with, but what are we going to do? That's me. Um, when I'm faced with a problem, I'm going to probably cry about it for a half a day. Then it's going to become, 
Now, what am I going to do? I need to come up with an action plan. Summer is so hard, so depressed, so tired of seeing pictures of families on, fa on and I'm assuming FB is Facebook, enjoying their days while I'm uh, drugging my kid into a coma just to stop getting, just to stop getting beat up for a few hours. And there are a lot of parents who deal with violence from their kids and being hit or struggling with their kids. Um, and I remember I was talking to a lady and you know what? I made that little crack or I said earlier concerning old oh, black parents don't get hit by their autistic kid, but actually they do because the lady that I'm thinking of now that I was talking to, she had, um, at the time my son was very young, it was like, uh, maybe four or five and her son was more like 11, I guess. And we were both military. And she said, you know, it's such a struggle when he, when, when her husband was deployed because she was talking about how violent her son could get. And I remember I walked out the house that day and I looked at Joshua, put him in his car seat and I looked at him and I said, look here, boy, let me tell you something. Uh, I ain't going to be scared of something I birth. So I would suggest you never lay a hand on me. I know I shouldn't have said that to my young child, but I did. And I meant it. I ain't going to be scared of what I birth now. You ain't going to be whooping my behind. Um, and, and, I, and I just never had that, had that issue with him. Uh, I had other issues. That may have been just as, you know, every autistic child ain't alike. One, one autistic child do this, one autistic child do that, and it's all struggles. But that one I didn't have. But I can't imagine. Um, we've had some, uh, like I said, there were some places that we did not take Joshua and, and, and my daughters did um, go. Um, sometimes his dad would stay with them. Sometimes they would go with their aunts or their grandparents because it was hard to enjoy summer and find out what it was that he liked and what, it, what things that he would enjoy other than swinging. He used to love to be on a swing. Um, but uh, other than that and other than swimming, and that's another thing he enjoyed, he loves to swim. So other, other than those things, what other things would he enjoy? You know, what amusement parks, um, uh, just other horseback riding. That was a no-no. My girls enjoyed, when we lived in Texas, horseback riding when we, when we could get it. But there was a no-no for him because he hate any animals. He don't, um, I don't, well, yeah, he hate them. <laughs> he hates them. He, it scares them, even to this day. He don't, don't bring no pets around him. He don't want any, anything other than human around him. He just don't. And um, that makes for a difficult time. But anyway, keep this video from going too long. We are on day 13 of what feels like one uh, continuous meltdown. I can't handle this much longer. My husband just pulled him off of me and now I am locked in the bathroom while he has a colossal uh, meltdown. Dear God, I don't know how much longer I can do this. This is another reason why I almost didn't do this video because these things are hard or di it's difficult to read. Um, because um, I recall some hard days when I'm when I thought, you know, Lord, how much longer can I do this? Um, and like I said, it's not every day. It's not even every week. But those days when it's hard, it feels like every day and every week. So that's my Joshua. I thought I had more pictures of him. I thought I had saved a younger picture of him, but I guess I didn't. Cause he was a cutie. Uh, and he is a cutie, but that's my Joshua. And I, you know, felt like since I've talked about him so much, y'all should see him. There's nothing that you can look at Joshua and really tell that he's um, autistic or, or in any way disabled. Um, which now as an adult, we have another set of problems. Um, when all the protesting, everything started, uh, my youngest child, like I said, when she left the dorm, she she stays here sometimes, but she mostly stays with her dad because the city that he lives in, that's where all her friends are. And the city where I live in, there's no, you know, nothing out here but me. But um, but she wanted to put a sign in the yard that said, you know, my brother's a, 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 a black man that's with autism and he does not speak. She felt the need to do something just in case something happened that a police officer wouldn't misunderstand him in any way, harm him. And uh, so now we have to deal with, and like I said, he likes to get up early in the morning and take a walk. 
um, by himself. He don't want nobody to take a walk with him. He don't want to tell anybody. My son is at that age now when he recognizes that he's an adult and he wants control of his own life. So he do things and sometimes he don't tend to tell us because he wants control. He, he feels like I'm a grown man. I do what I want. And uh, so now we have those things to deal with a as an adult. Um, he's an easygoing guy. He's a very social guy. But like I said, he's, he's not, in, in spite of him being social, he's very nonverbal. I mean, he's not very nonverbal. He's nonverbal. He's not going to talk at all. He understands what you're saying to him. Uh, we believe that he can read. We, we believe he can because of how he looks at books and his eye goes from left to right. Um, and, um, but we're not sure about a lot of things. We believe that he can drive, but of course we're not letting him drive. Um, we believe the boy can be independent, but because he's nonverbal, that limits so many things that we can allow him to do independently. So there's a, there, so it, it's, it's still, you still have struggles, but again, all the physical struggles of it gets a little bit easier. Um, and let me tell you, let me say again about autistic kids. We talked about these parents that were being hit. Now, Joshua never hit us. He never hit his sisters. Uh, but Joshua uh, was strong enough to, he would whoop a, an adult easy if set off. Um, and he, you know, we had issues with, like I told y'all earlier, he likes to swing. He used to like to swing. He doesn't anymore, but he used to like to swing. And he, when he swing, he didn't want anybody close to him. He didn't want anybody on the swing. He wanted to sit in the middle swing by himself and nobody beside him. Because if he's swinging and somebody else was swinging, it set him off because I guess, I don't know, just seeing somebody else swinging used to just upset him. So instead of him waiting his turn on the swing, he would just go out to the swings and, and literally pick people up and throw them off of it. So I had problems with him doing that. And I say that to say that they're very strong and you're not going to just run up on them. Be very mindful that you're not going to just run up on them. How y'all love to say uh, run up or or, 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 or however it is, whatever the, the little saying is that y'all like to say, come through, run up, whatever. You mess around with an autistic child or an autistic adult and run up in their face, you're going to get your ass whooped. Ain't no other way to say it, especially my son. And I'm not just saying that because he's my son. But we seen him on video in action when he was only about 12 years old. And he took a grown woman down. Um, uh, it, it was on the bus. They had a, a video on there. And Joshua was being scratched. They didn't know where the scratches were coming from. So they at school, they started kind of watching stuff. And, you know, and of course, they questioned us at home. And then we found out on the bus, him and the, and the bus lady, the bus monitor was, was having it out and she would grab him and he would grab her and it'd be an all out fight. And this grown woman was fighting my son. Uh, and uh, like I said, I saw her get taken down by my son. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I just, I just kind of, I didn't really do a lot of thinking about what I was saying in this video. I pulled, like I said, I pulled a lot of, um, that's my son now. I pulled a lot of, um, uh, passages from this journal uh, so that you can hear from other parents and kind of hear what parents go through with autistic kids. And I don't use this video to for anybody to feel sorry for anybody, but it was just basically an answer to uh, would an autistic, a parent of an autistic child or a disabled child want to use social media or other devices or other ways to escape their reality absolutely you bet you you better bet they do and i did too uh, mine wasn't necessarily social media actually it was i was in the aol chat back in the day and i used to be on there quite a bit just this black gospel chapel i think it was called but anyway um i i had a lot of i had a lot of escapes even with him even when he was in my presence with me um, I read a lot of books. Um, he likes music, so I like music. So we both, you know, listen to a lot of music. There was a lot of ways that I used to uh, to get me through it, to survive it. Um, 
I can, you know, share these little clips with you guys. I'm not really clips, these little passages from this vlog with you guys, but I could never really put into words how difficult it can be raising a, a child with autism, severe autism. Um, even when they're at school, you're worried and you're concerned because you're just waiting by the phone because because you may get a call that, you know, that can't calm them down today. Um, they're wanting to do the same thing over and over and don't want to participate today. They don't want to cooperate today. Can't get them to eat today. Um, I'm going to tell this and then I'm going to end this video. I remember one time they was having some issues with the bus. Now, autistic kids like to do the same thing over and over and over. And my son wrote, I'm going to make up a bus number. He wrote bus 825. And uh, him, his little buddy, he wrote bus 825. This was, he was, he was, by this time, he was about 16, 17 years old. And they called us and they said, look, something happened with that bus. It's already late. And the kids that ride that bus, because he went to a school where the, all of, in all of the school was autistic kids. And he said, the, the kids that ride that bus, they're already upset because they know what time it is. So now their timing is off. Their schedule is off because the bus is not here because the bus broke down. And we're sending another bus, but we don't know whether they'll get on the bus or not. So sure enough, <laughs> the majority of them would not get on the bus. So they started calling, you know, they had already called us and warned us, you know. So they started calling parents and I got there and I, you know, picked up my son and his, his little buddy that he used to hang with. And I had already called his mother and said, I'll just bring him home with us. So my son got on in the van and this little fella started having a, not my son, but the other little fella started having an all out fit. Okay. An all out meltdown. All right. So, so I had already looked at Joshua like, don't give me no stuff today. I know your bus didn't come. I'll, you know, handle it, get over it. I talked to him that way. And I've always talked to him that way. Um, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but it's definitely when he got older, it worked. And, you know, as I was looking at him, he was looking at me like, Hey, and cause I communicate with him a lot with my eyes, you know, and, and I do talk, but, it, and he was looking at me like, yeah, mom, I'm good. I'm cool. I'm just getting in the car and put my seatbelt on. I'm just glad to be going home. So then, like I said, his buddy in the back seat, I was driving a van in the back seat was having his meltdown. He looked back there and he, and he kind of made a noise. And my son does make noises. He kind of like, Hmm. And he looked at him like, hey, hey, I knew what he, I knew the look that he was giving him. You don't want to do this with my mom. She's, she's not that type of mom. You know, she, 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 you know, you, you don't, you want, you don't want to pull this today. She don't look like she in the mood. She don't look like she going to take this meltdown today. And, um, uh, so the little fella, you know, he kind of waved his arms and flapped. And, and autistic kids flap. If you ever see my son, he, him and my, him and his dad love to ride. They just ride, ride, ride. Um, um, they love, they love driving. And um, and he listened to music. He's just in there, just flapping his arms. You might think he's dancing, but really he's flapping his arms. Even at this age, I'm not the same to say he still do it. And um, so that's what the little fella did all the way home. And now this guy. Talk. My son is number, but this guy talked and he kept telling me, you know, um, bus 825 is supposed to come at 350, 825 supposed to come at 350. He basically said that the whole ride home, but he calmed down. My son was somehow able to calm him down by looking at him like, look, man, this ain't the day. <laughs> this ain't the day. But I mean, I don't know. Everybody think their child is more advanced or more special than anyone else. But my son certainly have personality. That's for darn sure. So this is the article that I use to pull those those uh, journal um, passages from uh, where those parents are speaking. There are so many more. I didn't. I've only I only shared maybe a third of them. There's so many more. And like I said, some things I didn't even want to say. Some things that parents went through is unimaginable and unbelievable. But it happens, and I'm familiar with it. Um, one thing that I did not mention that happens when children, autistic kids, go through uh, puberty is that they begin to have seizures. I recall my son had his first one. I was at work, and uh, my daughter called me uh, at work and said, Mom, you know, come home. We need you at home. And I said, well, what's going on? 
And she said, you know, something's going on with Joshua. And we had never seen him have a seizure before. And to this day, for whatever reason, I have never seen him have a seizure. He's never had one in my presence. But he had one that day, and that was the first time that he had one. And that's when we learned that autistic people, children, when they go through puberty, uh, they have seizures. Unfortunately, John Travolta lost his son. His son is, was autistic, and he passed away, I think, when he was age 17, um, due to a seizure. Um, that happens at a certain age. And so that's the, you, you have to deal with all of these behavior issues and these moods and these meltdowns and all of that. And then they get a certain age and now they're going to have seizures. So now you have to deal with that. And I didn't even mention, there's so many things I didn't mention. I didn't even mention the sleep patterns. I have taught myself a weird sleep pattern. Um, because, and I sleep very, very, very light. In fact, I take a nap every day right after work. And my nap is not really me going into a deep sleep. It's me in a sleep where I can hear and sense everything around me because you learn how to sleep that way with your autistic kids because they don't have a, they can stay up for days. I remember one time I was, I just didn't want to give my son any more medication. I was like, I don't want to give him any medication. I don't care that he's hyper today. That joker stayed up for about two days and then me and him needed some medication. We both needed some medication. But anyway, um, so that was, that's another thing. So you have to deal with the sleep patterns and this, these seizures and, um, try to get that under control. Now, thank goodness Joshua didn't have a whole, whole lot. And like I said, I don't know. The Lord knows all things because he, he's never been with me when he's had one and he hasn't had one in about three years or more. I don't think he's had a seizure since he's graduated and you know, they graduate um, they, they go to school for disabled. And when I say they disabled children go to school beyond 18 years, because then they have to do life, life skills, what's called life skills. Um, Stig's girl can tell you all about life skills cause she's an educator. Um, and, um, uh, but life skills is basically where they learn, um, skills to take care of themselves. Basically. Um, at one point my son was doing life skills and that joker had three jobs. And some of these men that like they can't get one job. And my disabled son had three jobs. He he was um sorting at the post office. He was doing recycling. And um and then on his other day off, he was at the school um helping out in the office with taking things to classrooms. Um and only two of those jobs he was getting paid for for. But um but yeah, so you, you have to do life skills. So you go to school longer. And I don't recall him having a seizure within the last three years. I really don't. Um, and I thank God for that, that, that it's over. So I guess, he, of course, he's through pu puberty and puberty has ended. So even that. So I would like to say to parents of autistic kids, being a mother of a child or, or, or son that's almost 26, and, it, and, and, and his autism is severe. It don't last forever. It's not bad every day. It does get easier. Um, things do change. You go from one challenge to another challenge. You know, we went from the challenge of can't, of his, he's hyper and he have these meltdown and he have these tantrums and you can't keep him in one place and we can't keep him in the house and he might run and he might jump out the car and run. And, and we went from that to when, you know, him, you know, getting a little older and wanting to have his way. And then we see some violence, you know, where, like I said, he would throw the kids off the swing, him and the bus driver wasn't getting along and they fighting, you know, those type thing. And then you go from that to now they're going through puberty which is an odd thing for them because they're feeling things in their body that you cannot explain and, and they can't understand and you can't explain to them. So now they're having seizures, whatever medical or uh, not medical, um, chemical imbalance is happening because of this, this, uh, them going through puberty is causing them to have seizures. So you go through that stage and then you go through the adult stage where they realize that they are an adult and they want their independence. And you have to deal with that in, in spite of your fear of what may happen if you give them their independence. But you got to let go, which is why my son lives with his father, because 
it's hard for me not to baby him. And my dad told me, you know, you're going to cause that boy a setback. You know, he does better with his, with his, with his daddy. And that's why he lives with his daddy. Cause his daddy lets him be a man. You know, his daddy is his daddy outside doing yard work. Joshua's outside doing yard work. Cause he said his son is not going to be sorry. There's no excuse. If his daddy is outside washing the car, he's outside washing the car. You know, um, when he goes to the grocery store with his dad, his dad lets him go on to get and do his own little shopping and, and, and come back. And, you know, like I said, he goes for his walks in the morning, things that I would be way too afraid to do when he's here. Um, he wants me to baby him and, and you best believe I do. And then we argue because <laughs> then, you know, he, like I said, he's, he's a neat freak. I'm not, you know, so it's interesting when you see us together and you look at this boy, if you want to know how Miss Cruz look, I look just, my son looks just like me. He's, uh, the boy looks just like me. But anyway, this is Miss Cruz. I hope that this video was helpful. I may not post it. After all that, I probably won't post this video. This is Miss Cruz. Please like, share, and subscribe.